Ah, Major League Baseball in the mid-2000s. Steroid scandals, rivalry upsets, international talent, the start of the obsession with the three true outcomes, and Moneyball. What some consider some of the highest peak of entertainment in baseball history. But our story today has little to do with any of these stupid things. Sometimes in baseball, players can be forgotten. Lost in the hype of the newest superstar with swag and flair. Lost because they're no longer in their prime. Lost because of the market they play in. Lost because they're a relic from another time. Baseball cherishes new legends as fast as they discard old ones. Sometimes, it's nice to go back and recognize them when their legend fades from our memories. This is the Forgotten Legend of Evan Longoria. I think to understand Longoria's legend and why it's forgotten, we have to know what that legend is. In 2007, the Tampa Bay Devil Rays won 66 games, and this wasn't anything new to this club. Ever since their inception in 1998, the Devil Rays had exactly one season where they won 70 or more games, which was an exact 70 win season in 2004. Really soaked that in. One 70 win season in 10 years, and the rest were sub 70 win teams. It almost feels impossible how bad this team was. Consistently horrible. A 39% club win rate for 10 miserable long years. In 2007, they did have some pieces like Carl Crawford, the 1.0 PS Carlos Pena, and an up-and-coming young and talented pitching staff. The point is, the team had promise, but 66 wins is far off what was needed in 2008 to make a playoff spot. You see, dear viewer, there were only four playoff spots in each league prior to 2012, so you had to be a division title holder or win the lone wildcard slot to make it to the playoffs. And in the then, and still now, toughest division in baseball, 66 wins was so far off what they needed. They could realistically be looking at a window starting in two or three years, but even that is a pipe dream. To understand the season that was to come, you have to remember, 2007 was only three years removed at the 2004 peak of the Red Sox and Yankees rivalry, and although it peaked in 2004, that doesn't mean it still wasn't hot. That's all people cared about in baseball, at least to the average Joe. Even in baseball, the AL East, hell, all of the AL was about the Red Sox and the Yankees. This high tide drama in terms of players like Manny Ramirez, A-Rod, and Jeter. The Devil Rays were just an afterthought. An afterthought to an afterthought. The rat led to ever-hungry lions. But in 2008, that was all gonna change. The Devil Rays, scratch that, the Tampa Bay Rays, had another mid-start to the year, starting the 2008 season. They were 5-5. Five and five. However, on April 11th, one thing changed everything for the best. Willie Ibar, the Rays opening day starting third baseman, went on the then called disabled list. Why is this good? Well, Willie Ibar has a controversial history. But for the purpose of our main story, Evan Longoria was gifted a spot on the Major League roster. And boy, did he come out guns blazing. Although an RBI single on his debut isn't anything really that crazy or exciting, he wasn't done there. Two days later, he came up with his team already scoring four in the frame and down a run in the seventh. The excitement and promise he brought to a team that needed a new franchise face led the freshly rebranded Rays and Longoria to signing a nine-year, $45 million deal, which would end up being one of the greatest dollar-per-war-spent contracts in modern MLB history. After the contract, there was nothing left but to play baseball. And oh, that's what Evan did. He was more than ready and equipped to lead one of the biggest worst-to-first seasons in MLB history and usurp the Red Sox and Yankees. On May 8th, he hit his first walk-off home run. On the 24th of May, he had his first multi-homer game. 
On the 25th, the very next day, he hit his second career walk-off. He swings and drives it into right center field. That ball's going to be in there for extra bases. Pena hitting third. Ball is going to wave him around. There will be no throw and the Rays win. Rays win it on a double by Evan Longoria. In June, he had a staggering 1.024 OPS, leading him to become AL Rookie of the Month and win AL Player of the Week at the end of June. He didn't stop there. He took Hall of Famer Roy Halladay in the middle of his Blue Jays prime deep for his first career Grand Slam. Later, he made the Home Run Derby an All-Star game. And although his Home Run Derby performance wasn't that good, for the All-Star game, he led baseball in votes. Well, on a technicality. He was a fan vote, and fan votes often got more votes than the regular starting lineup votes. But technically, in 2008, Evan Longoria had the most all-star game votes of all time up to that point. So, you know, that counts for something. Unfortunately, our favorite forgotten legend Longoria got a bit of an ouchie on his wrist in August, which I can't find a clip for. So, here's a badly made edit of a ball hitting Longoria's wrist, even though I'm almost certain he heard it sliding into a base. But... That's even harder to make, and you know what, I'm lazy. So, here you go. In September, he came back, and on the 18th, he hit his first career three-home run game against the Twins. And for this clip, I can't play the audio. The only clip of Longoria's three-homer game is found in a highlight video that I made for a channel I gave up on a long time ago. It has copyrighted music, which is why I can't play it, but I promise the call from Dwayne Stats is good. I promise. Also, the Rays lost this game. It has nothing to do with our story, but it's funny how baseball works sometimes. A couple days later, it was only fitting for him to catch the final out that clinched a race spot in the playoffs. Caught! Bottom Fisher's no more. The Rays are going to the playoffs. Later in the month on the 26th, the Rays would officially usurp the Kings of the East and achieve not only their first playoff berth ever, but their first division title ever. What a spectacular rise for the Rays' young third baseman, the sixth unanimous rookie of the year, and just look at those stats. A near 900 OPS, five war. These type of seasons from a rookie are fairly rare, even to today's standards. Not only that, the Tampa Bay Rays in 2008 finished with a 97-65 record, which was obviously their best record in franchise history. The only question now, how would the rookie handle the postseason? Gloria leads it off here in the second inning and gets into this one to deep left. Wise back looking up. The Rays strike first. Tampa Bay is on top one nothing. Soft breaking ball is hit a ton up near the catwalks. High, deep, far, and gone. Two at bats, two home runs for Evan Longoria. Welcome to the postseason, Evan Longoria. Is it that easy? Wow. Longoria's first two at-bats in the American League Division Series resulted in home runs, only the second player ever to do that in Major League Baseball history. The Rays would beat the White Sox in four and move on to the face the wildcard winning and newly found rivals, the Boston Red Sox in the American League Championship Series. In what would prove to be one of baseball's greatest and, ironically enough, most forgotten postseason series of all time, for which I can never do it justice in this video alone, it was a seven-game series classic that the Rays finally won where rookie David Price got the save. Look at that. But our boy Longoria belted four home runs in the series, which somehow didn't net him an ALCS MVP, but to be fair, Matt Garza won two games for them while having an ERA of 1.38, so I guess I can't be too mad at that. That would jump Longo's total to six postseason home runs already, tying the rookie record for home runs in a postseason and inching him extremely close to the postseason home run record at the time, which was eight. Now, before we go on to the World Series, it's important to note something here. Longoria not only had a magical year that paralleled the Rays' 2008 magical year, but his name became somewhat household, at least for baseball players' standard. See, his name is really just close to a certain hot, desperate housewives actress's name, Eva Longoria. 2008 was the midst of her fame. She's still somewhat remembered today, but in 2008 she was everywhere. Well, not actually, she was mostly known for her role on Desperate Housewives, but I think you get what I'm trying to say. It became such a story between the two of them, she actually got Longoria, Evan, a gift for his all-star game appearance, a champagne bottle, which I'm sure when she handed it to him, 
Evan rizzed her up to the max, since of course we all know now that they're married to each other. But dear viewer, there's a reason I bring this up. It's important to know not only because this shot his name into mainstream media, and Evan Longoria, for a short while, was almost as known as A-Rod or Jeter, but the Philadelphia Phillies fans played into this. Very hard. The Phillies fans are well known for their... passion, let's call it. They chanted... at our young hero throughout games 3, 4, and 5 in Philadelphia. But during the 2008 World Series, the first ever for a failing franchise, the first ever for a rising superstar, Evan Longoria, who had hit six home runs against the White and Red Sox with over a 1.0 OPS in those two series, went one for 20 with a single and nine strikeouts. The Phillies won in five, and it was an abrupt end to a magical Rays season. They had just pulled off the second biggest win differential in Major League Baseball history, only a few games short of the Diamondbacks' famous worst to first from 1998 to 1999. They accomplished everything and more they wanted to in 2008, and they set up the perfect scenario to win their first ever title. A rebrand, a new face of the franchise, and a roster full of young talent. But alas, the baseball gods giveth, and the baseball gods taketh. It was a magical year for Longoria and the Rays regardless, and this looked like very promising signs for them. A World Series ring was bound to finally come to St. Pete. Unfortunately, 2009 didn't carry a lot of the same magic. They only won 84 games in 2009, but their team failures fell more onto the horrendous 2009 pitching staff more than Longoria or the rest of their lineup. Because for Longo, 2009 was a massive improvement. Another all-star selection, a gold glove, a silver slugger, 113 RBIs and 33 bombs, a 7.0 war. A magical and improbable rookie year normally is followed by a sluggish sophomore year, but Evan turned up the gas even more. In 2009, he established himself as not only one of the top third basemen in the game, but as one of baseball's top players in general. There were talks of him becoming one of the greatest third basemen of all time. He accumulated nearly 12 war, 60 homers, 130 OPS plus, in an absolutely elite glove in his first two seasons in the big leagues. His name stayed as one of the biggest names in baseball, lending himself plenty of commercials, plenty of time in the limelight, and getting a spot on the MLB 2K10 cover back when they used to make MLB games. I bet you're wondering, dear listener, if he's so forgotten, but played at an elite level and praised so much, when did he start to decline? I mean, he isn't dropping seven war seasons anymore. And you know what? You'd be right on that assumption. But 2010 was not that year. For the third year in a row, he improved, and this is arguably his best year yet. At first glance, you may look at these 2009 and 2010 stat and award comparisons and think, how is this an improvement? He had less home runs, less RBIs, only a few more hits and a few more doubles and triples. And his defense went up a little, but nothing too crazy. How is this an improvement? Well, he struck out a lot less, raised his average to nearly 300, Races OPS plus by 10 points, grounded into half as many double plays, which, fun fact, he led baseball in 2009 into grounded into double plays, which is pretty interesting because he was actually decently fast in his early days. But to top 2010 off, sure he got his third straight all-star game appearance and second straight gold glove, but Longoria posted an 8.2 war, which was third best in baseball, barely behind Roy Halladay, who in 2010 threw a perfect game against the Marlins and a no-hitter in the playoffs against the Phillies and Josh Hamilton, who won his MVP that year with his ridiculous slash line. He also had this pretty viral clip of him and BJ Upton go viral in 2010, which definitely added to his likability and Upton's dislikability, which is a whole nother story. Rays, uh, came back off the field after the top half of the fifth inning. Longoria took exception to uh, BJ Upton's lack of effort in center field. And you can't blame Longoria for that. Listen, uh, I would rather see teammates get on teammates. For As for the playoffs, the Rays made it again in 2010. They won their second division title in franchise history. In an ALDS, Longoria homered and did all right, but the Rays would lose in five to Texas, who eventually went on to the World Series. And while 2008 and 2009 and 2010 all had their reason in Longo's legend, with the accolades, the recognition, the stats, the clutch moments, 2011 would be more special for another reason. Because for me, 
2011 is the greatest year of Major League Baseball of my lifetime. You see, I spent a lot of time covering Longo's 2008 season because all four of us Ray fans hold that year dearly. It was a magical and important year for the Rays franchise and for Longoria's career. 2011 was more the same. First of all, 2011 was the year Gillette released this viral clip. I'm certain my mom has watched this, so that's how you know it went viral. And I'm not just talking basic viral. I mean, this clip went viral, viral. Tens of millions of views on early 2011 YouTube alone. Hundreds of millions of views on Facebook. This is also in the middle of the age of video where people started releasing like fake videos to get views. And this was a huge part of that trend. And yes, if you didn't know, this is fake. Sorry to break it to you, bud. But back to baseball. In terms of statistics, it was a very, very small step back in 2011. Despite missing nearly 30 games due to an oblique injury early in the year, Longo still accumulated 31 homers, 99 RBIs, had a career high in walks, and had a 7.2 war. His only true step backward was the fact his average dropped by 50 points in 2011, but outside of that, it was more of the same. Four straight years of elite and prime Evan Longoria. But the real story of 2011 came in September, because what is about to unfold is one of the greatest comeback stories and then eventual days of baseball of all time. And you damn well know Longoria is smack dab in the middle of that story. Because folks, it's time for the story of Game 162.